Hey, Ted here. I wanted to go over removing the transom assembly components on an Alpha 1. So this is the early version, and I'm going to show you how to take that apart. Uh, what I'm going to do is remove the shift cable. I've already removed the hinge pins to make it a little easier. I'm going to show you a little trick about removing the hose clamps. It's a nice little tool that I use, um, and a pair of cable cutters for actually cutting through the cable. So let's get started. All right, so the first thing I wanted to do is kind of go over the removal of that shift lever. So that shift lever is going to be replaced. Okay, we're going to put a brand new one in there. And uh, what you do, pretty easy to take it apart, um, is to use a sharp chisel. So just take a sharp chisel, what you want to do, I've already broken this one in half, but just to show you how you're going to put it in there, line it up with a screw as such. You can actually see where I've actually chiseled it at that angle. And then just hit that with a hammer two or three times and bam, it will break that arm in half. So that's the first part of removing that. Now at that point, I can actually get that arm out of the way because that's going to be replaced. Um, next is you can actually then take a screwdriver and wiggle this screw and take it out and I'll take that shaft out. The second part of what I'm going to do is I'm going to slide that accordionized bellows back. And then what I want to do is I want to take a pair of Nipex cable cutters. These a good tool for us marine mechanics to have to cut cable. These are designed to cut steel cable. They are not designed for really anything else. They come in a different couple of different sizes. You can order one through him. So I'll get this set up and then uh, I'll show you how to cut that cable and remove it a little further. And I can get in there with the Nipex cutters and I can cut that cable. Out. So I'm just going to grab a pair of pliers and push that back just a little bit more. There we go. So now you can see that I can get at the cable over here. So I'm going to take my Nipex cutters and I'm going to put it around that cable and I'm going to cut that cable off. There's one part. Might take out a couple of chops to get to it. A little bit more on the top, some of the plastic. And at this point, with 99% of the cable cut through, I can probably take a pair of diagonal cutters. There we go. Okay, so I got the cable cut in half. Now what, I'm, what I can do is I can take this part right out. So this piece comes right out now. All right, I got that cleaned out some. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take that specialty socket that you can purchase, or you can sacrifice a Craftsman 916 socket and just weld a nut on like I did. And that fits over and it's gotta be flush. So one thing that you really wanna do is after you cut that cable is, is don't be too concerned if the threads in there stick because you may have to drill it out and you may have to tap it. Um, the tap that you're going to want to use, okay, and this is another little trick I use, is I've taken an old half-inch socket which fits over the tap, and I've just taped the tap to the socket, and I leave that in the drawer, so that way I can just use that with a ratchet, and I can chase those threads out real quick. So I'm going to back that, uh, that cable out, so let me unthread that next. There we go. So there's the end of the cable. And thread it out pretty nice here. Yeah. So that's the end. That's where I cut it off. And I've got the threads there. Now what I'm going to do anyway is I'm just going to run that tap in there real lightly just to clean those threads up a touch. And when I put the new cable on, I'm going to put some uh, pipe sealant on these threads because this is going to be underwater. You can use pipe sealant, perfect seal, non-hardening sealer on the threads. And these are, if I can get up close enough to look, these are tapered threads. So it's like a tapered pipe thread. And that's why you need a pipe tap. You can't just use a regular tap. It has to be a pipe tap. Okay. 
just just so if there's any questions, I took it apart and pulled the socket off. So this is a quarter 18 tap, okay? So that's the size you need, which is what those threads are on the end of the cable when you wanna chase those up. So what I do is I just basically take a standard 12 point, old half inch socket I've got, kicking around in my toolbox. And what's nice is it fits right in a 12 point, just like it was made for. And then just electric tape it together and it's a shortcut. You got it in your arsenal ready to go the next time. Okay, so I got that pipe tap started in there. I'm just gonna run it in there by hand just to clean those threads up a little. A little corroded, but the threads are in good shape, so. Okay, so I've taken the lever off, taken a screwdriver, and I have freed up this screw here. Take that screw out, just push it out with your finger. It is, as you can see, it's sleeved. And you can just take that shaft right out now. So I'm just gonna wiggle that shaft and pull it straight down. And there's the old seal actually, the center of the seal actually came down with it. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna drive it out. So I'll get that set up and show you that next. All right, I got it cleaned up a little bit. And what you don't wanna forget is this little plastic washer. That little plastic washer, you have to put that on there when you're gonna put the new arm on. So when you're getting ready to put this new arm on, don't forget to put that washer in there. Put a little grease on the washer, you know, this aids is a little bit less corrosion there. So what we have is we actually have that bushing that's left. And the seal was on the underside of the bushing. So that bushing goes most of the way down through. And what's left of the seal is right behind it. So even though the housing of the seal is very thin walled and it's stuck in there, it's going to come right out. Because what I'm going to do is I'm going to drive this rest of this bushing out. And that bushing is about the thickness of the new seal that's gonna go in. So then what I'm gonna do is press this back in. Now this is the new style. This has the double back to back seals in it. Okay, so there's the hose clamp I gotta come out. And with this long extension in the socket driver, I can simply reach in there and line that up. Take that hose clamp, as you can see and loosen it right up. So it really makes it easy to do this. I've got a couple of more I've got to get out. One of them is in the, in the bottom of the, um, of the exhaust bellows. But the next one I have to get out is the one up on the top. Flashlight and an extra hand instead of holding the camera. There it is. So I got it in there and I can just spin that hose clamp out, which is so I'm gonna do the exhaust bellows. Now the exhaust bellows is gonna be on the bottom. So what I've gotta do is I've gotta tilt this up, support it, and then take that hose clamp off. Now once that hose clamp's off, that bellows probably hose, I can just pop that off, and then I can take this whole assembly, um, and I can take the whole assembly out. All right, so I've got the hose clamp disconnected, and I pulled up on the bell housing and I have the exhaust bellows just come off. I just took a screwdriver and worked on a little hose clamp tool and it pops right off. So I've got one more hose clamp that I have to undo. I've got this one undone. I've got to get to the water pickup one, which is up top and I've got to undo that. But right now, if I work on the inside with my hand, I can work on the other bellows. I can get that U-joint bellows probably loose if I work my hand around the inside. It's a little dirty, but if I work around the inside, I'm gonna get that hose clamp loose. Then I'm gonna pull the whole assembly out and I can get to the water pickup hose clamp easier. So I'm gonna work that hose, that drive bellows loose first. Okay, I got that upper bellows loose. I grabbed right here and I gave it a pull back and I could get my hands on the inside and press the bellows down and work it loose some and then boom comes right out. So now I've got the whole bell housing almost out. The only hose left is the water hose. 
So I got to take that water hose and we're going to take that out. So I'm going to replace the drive bellows. I'm going to replace the exhaust bellows, um, the gimbal bearing while I got this out and obviously that cable. Now that cable, this is a great time to talk about taking that cable out. If you're in a tight situation and you're trying to get that cable to go, you know, inside the boat and up around and through the exhaust and everything, this is the time that you need to try to get the old cable to go back through, which is the hard part. So what you've got, this is out. This is nice to have this out. I can slide the cable through this housing and thread it into this housing with it off. And then what I can do is I can take that, the, res the residual cable, the old one, and I can take that, and I'm gonna push some through this way. So I can take the old cable, and now what I can do is I can attach that to the new cable, because the new cable has to go through here. Um, what I like to do also is I like to take the new cable, the brand new accordionized bellows, put some soap on it, a little grease, whatever you want to do, slide the new accordionized bellows up the new cable, right? Then you can disconnect and get this bellows out of the way. Now at that point, then you can usually slide this cable, you know, a little bit of tape on it, a few wraps of electric tape, and you can just simply push on this and go on the inside and it'll trace the new one up through there. So, so I've got to take this bonding wire out and this bonding wire goes on the inside of the gimbal ring into the outside. You definitely want to have this bonding wire intact when you put it back together. There should be bonding wires that attach the steering on the inside to the engine. There should be bonding wires out here. There's also an a uh, bonding wire back down here for the gimbal ring that attaches to the other underside here. So all of these bonding wires are critical. You have to have those on there. If they don't, you don't have continuity between the anode and the outer parts and that sets up for uh, galvanic corrosion and these outer parts that aren't bonded will corrode. The zinc would only protect whatever it's attached to. Ideally, if everything's bonded together, then everything has the same potential and that anode is what's gonna corrode, right? So here's another little trick to getting this out. This screw is pretty frozen in there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my screwdriver, I'm gonna get that in that screw and I'm gonna hold it, I'm gonna push in, try to get it as center as I can, right? And then I'm gonna hit it with a hammer. I'm gonna turn it counterclockwise while I'm giving it some love tap. It is moving, which is good. So I'm going to try to work it back and forth a little bit. And it's moving. So now a little bit of penetrant, and that screw is definitely going to come out. So I've got the bonding wire off. All right, I've got that hose i got to get off of there. And then this whole bell housing comes out. Then we're going to take that gimbal bearing out.